Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of Saturday, the 14th week in Ordinary Time. Today is also the memorial of St. Benedict the Abbot. In today's Mass, we will pray for all of you, pray for your families, and pray for people that you, you care about every day in your heart. Pray that God who listens to the breath of every one of us may take care of the things and the people you care about. Today, I also pray for those who are sick with coronavirus, pray especially for families that have asked my prayers at this time. I pray for a couple that is been diagnosed with, vir with this, this virus and are awaiting a test for their children. Pray that God may watch over them and that God may keep them safe. I also pray for those who are in critical condition especially for those who are struggling that God may help them find total and complete recovery pray for our doctors and nurses pray for all medical staff especially those in states where this virus is peaking right now and they are just overwhelmed that God may help them maintain their composure protect themselves and provide care for our sick we continue to pray for those who have anniversaries and birthdays and other remembrance days for themselves to celebrate, that God may grant them many more healthy, joyful, and peaceful years to celebrate. And I'll invite you to bring your intentions that we may pray together at this time. Our opening hymn today is Table of Plenty. We are invited to this table of spiritual abundance. Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need, here are the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table, where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at this table of In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Benedict the Abbot. In this Mass, we would have the intentions we have already mentioned, but I also invite you, if you are joining us at this time, to bring forth your intentions, and just lay them on this table of plenty, where there is enough and sufficient grace for me to meet every need. Let us now go to God and ask forgiveness and mercy for our sins. Lord Jesus, for the many who are sickened by this virus, we ask your healing graces. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the several thousands who have died from this virus, we ask your peace and your rest. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the many lives seriously impacted and in some way put on hold by this virus, we ask your mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For those whom you have rescued from the slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, with the train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. Each of them had six wings. With two, they veiled their faces. With two, they veiled their feet. And with two, they hovered aloft. They cried one to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed. For I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me holding an amber, that he had taken with tongues from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, the Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and God about with strength. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. And he has made the world firm not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old. From everlasting you are O Lord. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holy, holiness befits your house, O Lord, for the length of days. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. You are in if you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of God rests upon you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, No disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the house, Beelzebub, how much more those of his household. Therefore, do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be made known. 
What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whisper, proclaim on the house tops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. And not two sparrows sold for a small coin, yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's notice. Even all the hairs on your head are counted. You, so do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I am so excited this morning to celebrate this great gift of God with all of you who are able to tune in and to participate. As our opening hymn said, that we are invited to this table of plenty where God is able to meet every need that is out there in human life. And so I hope and I pray that this moment, this celebration of this great sacrament will not only bring you the spiritual grace, but may also have physical effects in your life. That if you are sick, you may find strength for healing. That if you are losing your hope, that you may find refresh, refreshness in your hope. And if something else is going on in your life, that you may see the physical manifestation of the grace that this sacrament brings in your life today. I will invite you to come with me to the readings just so we could reflect on what God is saying to us today. As we hear these readings, we listen to Jesus. Today he is addressing, he was speaking to the apostles at this time. But I think today he is speaking to me and speaking to you. And speaking to everyone who is a disciple, everyone who bears the name of Christian. And Jesus, who was a good man, did everything right, never harmed or hurt anyone, never cheated anyone. All he did, scripture says, he went about doing good. But in spite of how good he was, there were some people who still did not see that he was good. They called him all kinds of names. Today he tells so he makes reference to how they had called him Beelzebub. That means he was a prince of demons, not the son of God. Now, believe it or not, they were trying to not just change the name of Jesus. They were also trying to change his title, trying to change his identity, trying to change his vision, trying to change his mission. Because when they call him Beelzebub, the prince of demons, so his title as the son of God was no longer the son of God. He was going to become something else. His mission as the saving victim was no longer going to hold. Then he was going to become something else. And I think about how often we experience this exact same thing. If you have not experienced it, and I doubt if you have not, because things like this very often begin from when we are very young. For some people who had parents who were very abusive, it was with your parents that you began to have your identity changed in some way by the name calling, by the kind of things they said to you. 
by the ugliness you experienced growing up. Suddenly, they were beginning to reshape and reform God's plan in your life, the identity God had for you. And that may have left a lot of damage to who you are or who you turned out to be as a person. That may have hurt or harmed you in some way. And maybe you're still feeling the effect of those scars. All of that led to you. Now, that's different and it belongs to a different place. But it speaks to the same thing. That too many times we don't see what God sees in others. Because I'm sure if your parents saw what God saw in you before he gave you to them, they would honor what God honored in you before he gave you as a gift to them. And the same is true whether you are a wife. If your husband could see what God saw in you, he would honor what God sees in you. Same is true as a worker, maybe the person cleaning the streets. If wealthy and more advantaged or privileged people saw what God saw in you or see what God sees in you, they will honor you. Maybe you are poor and dying right now. And someone may, may have given you a name that you don't deserve only because you're poor or only because you are not as blessed as others. So we do have a lot of names that people, a lot of titles that people give us. That is just judgment of us. Now, most of those titles do violence, real violence on people. And there are times where we are the same ones doing all of that. We're, we are the ones doing the name calling. Now, name calling is part of what we do because we, God gave us from the beginning of creation, God gave Adam the authority to give names. Don't forget, it was Adam that God gave authority and whatever he called everything, that became its name. So, but there's also a misuse, just like everything else, there is a misuse of the rights and privileges God gives us. When we begin to use our power to call and to name in a way that is hypocritical, in a way that is unfair, in a way that is unjust, in a way that is wrong. As we see here today, Jesus, the Son of God, the ultimate giver of all good gifts, is called Beelzebub, the Prince of Demons. The next time, the next time you use your lips, to name something I hope you name them you name whatever you do let me just go back to the first reading and see what Isaiah said here Isaiah said I am a man of unclean lips living among people of unclean lips and now I have I have seen the Lord I might die and see what happened there was a transformation Immediately, there was a transformation, and I hope that transformation will also be true for you too. It says, Then an angel, the seraph, flew towards me, holding an amber that he brought from the altar. Remember, I said to you, From this altar, there is grace for every need. So the seraph brought an amber from the altar and touched my lips and said to me see now that this has touched your lips and for some what is going to touch your lips will be the Eucharist that is going to be the amber that hopefully will sanitize how you speak what you name and what you say because what you say and what you name and what you call does have an impact on people who hear them. It either minimizes them, destroy their sense of self and identity, and begin to define for them how they see themselves and perceive themselves. So in a sense, you drain their dignity from them. And so I hope that this amber, if you're watching from anywhere, 
this Eucharist that most of us are going to receive spiritually will be the amber that God uses to touch our lips, to purify our lips. It says, see, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin is purged. And I hope that when this happens, you will be willing and ready like Isaiah. Hear what Isaiah says. He says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying to me, Whom shall I send? So God is still looking for people whose lips have been purified because the world is sick and waiting for people to speak words of comfort, affirmation, words of healing and encouragement, words of peace and hope, words of redemption and deliverance. The world is still the world is still waiting right now. And Isaiah said, that I heard the voice of the Lord say to me, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And he says, Here I am. Send me. And I hope that will be your response too. That you won't look for an excuse. Before the end of today, believe me or not, before the end of today. You will see God calling you to something. God inviting you to get involved in something good. Yeah, and there's a chance you might resist it and rather prefer to do something else, something bad, something something unhelpful, something harmful. But I hope, like Isaiah, you are willing to say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. So, the next time, you speak about someone. I hope that you are gracious, that you are compassionate, that you are kind, that you are encouraging, that you are helpful, that you are inspiring in some way. Because the power of all of this is in you. Because there is something godly in you. And believe it or not, there's something else that I normally will say here every time I celebrate that you are the delight of Almighty God. There are too many people, God's children, who don't believe that they are worthy, that they are valuable, that they matter, that they are something because people have fought their entire life to define them as nothing, as nobodies. There are people today with an identity crisis. Not sure if there is anything they will do to be good enough. Not sure if they are going to be valued, ever valued enough. Because of how they haven't treated. Because believe it or not, how we are loved, embraced, treated would have an effect on how we define ourselves, how we see ourselves, how we view ourselves in relation to others. The whole idea or the whole concept of inferiority complex develops from the fact that someone did not make me feel valued and I learned to devalue myself or to accept myself as not valued or not valuable enough. Today, if you don't feel like you are good enough as a wife or you are made to feel you're not good enough as an in-law or made to feel you're not good enough as a student made to feel you're not good enough as a child or as a husband made to feel you're not good enough as a parent made to feel you're not good enough as a Christian or anything else just name whatever it is that you have been made to feel or you have felt not good enough Today, God says to you from his own word, you are worth more than you could ever imagine that anyone, that would have, than anything anyone has ever said to you. You are worth more than that. Scripture says, does not one sparrow fall to the ground and God notices it? Yes, a sparrow, it's a bird. And God sees it. How much more will God 
value you, the image of the Almighty God. One who has been raised to the place where God is able to call you my son, my daughter. So no one can strip you of your dignity and your value and your worth. Because that is not given to you by anyone. Now if you remember the words of our constitution, the opening words. It says, all men are created by God and given. They are the ones, it's God who gives. God gave us some inalienable rights. No one, no one gave us those rights. No government gave us those rights or those values. No one, no government gave us that dignity. No, no government gave us that definition. It is God who gave it to us. And because it's God who gave it to us, no one has the power to take it from you unless you cede it to them. And so God values you. And it's time you begin to value yourself and quit listening to the name calling that people call you. If they call you one name, you answer to what God calls you. If they tell you, you are second hand, there is no, they should show you the first hand because there is no other person like you and there has never been any other person like you in the whole world and there will be none like you. So we pray, dear friends, that as we reflect on God's word today, that we will quit allowing people to get into our heads to minimize who we are, to diminish us, to, de to redefine us, and to call us by what we are not. We know what God calls us. I'm sure if God called me today, he will call me Philip, my beloved son. He will call you by whatever name and he would add the qualifier, beloved, son or daughter. That's how God is going to call you. And so you are the beloved of the Almighty God. You are the delight of God. And I hope this helps us to pick ourselves wherever life has left us, wherever people have placed or whatever box people have put us into. We are able to free ourselves and just begin to live the life God has called us in the language of Isaiah. Here I am. I am, I am here to express and to define myself and to be what God has called me to be. Here I am, Lord. Send me back into that place. Dear God, may you touch the minds and hearts of all those who have been hurt by how others have defined them, have treated them, or have made them feel about themselves. And may they begin to see how you see them and begin to live out their true lives and begin to live out their true mission. As always, I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are forever the delight of God. God loves you very much. Let us pray. That the goodness of God, the goodness and faithfulness of the church may prevail Despite the brokenness of its members, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in a disordered world, leaders will frame laws in accord with God's commandments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people suffering mental anguish, especially as a result of this coronavirus and all the deprivations of this moment and time. That they will remain secure on the rock of faith that is Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That faith in the reconciling victim of this Eucharistic sacrifice will bring us the free gift of God's grace to see, to view, to treat each other and ourselves as God sees us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sickened by this coronavirus, for family members who provide care, for doctors and nurses, for all healthcare workers, for our first responders, for our police, for our military, and for all those dedicated to caring for our sick society. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who celebrate their birthdays today or other anniversaries, that God may bless them today, tomorrow, and forever, and give them many more opportunities to celebrate these events. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Lord, accept the concerns we have raised before you. Listen to all the others we carry every day in our hearts. Please accept them and grant them through Christ our Lord. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for three of us we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for three of us we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and walk of your men and become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. May this oblation dedicated to your holy name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conducts closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit lift up your heart we lift them up to the Lord we must give thanks to the Lord our God it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks father most holy through your beloved son Jesus Christ your word through whom you made all things whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember all those who have 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, O we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you and to your families, may God's peace rest and abide now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. But I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. For those who can only participate spiritually, let us pray. Ever merciful ever compassionate, ever loving God. Every day you manifest yourself in different ways to restore our confidence, to give us hope, but also to nourish and bless our lives. For all of your children who are still unable to attend Mass and to receive your body and blood, this sacrament of grace that meets every need, may they feel the full effects of this sacrament spiritually, O oh God, in their lives today. May they find the healing effects. May they find the purifying effects. May they find the grace healing effects. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the price of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him with humble prayer and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the means of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, 
I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you who were able to join us, join us at this mass. I pray that um, you are all blessed by this experience and by this encounter, and that you may feel God's love every day in your heart. Remember this, you are worth more than anything you think, than anything anyone ever says of you. You're worth more than that. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll sing some amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the song that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see towards grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace. Of I first been.